Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. In my last video, I did a cell portrait shoot using the black and white photo paper reversal technique. And this is the output. If you have not watched the video, please click on the link on the top right hand corner. In the reversal photo, it's actually a mirror image. That is fine usually for landscape shot and all that. If there are numbers or figures on the photo, you can easily tell that this is a mirror image. So today in this video, I will examine a few ways to see how I can do a reversal shot and yet have the uh, text or figure still show, showing up in the uh, right orientation. Of course, the easiest way is to just uh, scan this photo and then uh, flip the image horizontally and the text will be in the right orientation. Uh, the other way that I have read about and uh, learned is to make use of mirrors. So uh, you can place the mirror at 45 degrees to the subject and then the and your camera in this position. So what happens is that the light will go into the mirror and the mirror will reflect the light into the uh, camera itself. So what happens is that you are actually taking a photo of the mirror image and that in turn will reverse the text into the right orientation. But this all I learned, I have never tried it before. But I went ahead to um, DIY a mirror scope so that I can fit it in front of the lens. So I will take you through the process and see how well does it work. So again, this is not a tutorial because I'm also doing this for the first time. Um, if you have better ways of how to reverse a mirror text, please share in the comment section below. So this is the acrylic mirror that I got from an art supply store in Singapore. I bought it from Artfriend. So I have previously cut a piece, but this piece was, has become kind of dirty. So I'm going to cut another piece. Just use this cutter and then score along the line. Uh, usually, I think 15 to 20 times, you should be able to break the piece apart. So as you cut, you can see that the acrylic uh, material got cut. So you just scroll along the same line about 15 times. Okay. So I will cut this. I also uh, file this down a bit so that there's no sharp edges and we can remove the protective cover you can see that this is the mirror okay so this is the scope casing that i 3d printed so i'm just going to uh, tape the mirror into here so here closer look at the scope itself is something that I 3D printed. I'm still very new to 3D printing so I could be doing a lot of things wrong but um, this is the only design that I can come up with. I draw a, a 3D uh, drawing of it and then print it out using my 3D printer. Uh, as I say I was very new so I couldn't find a way to uh, so called glue the two pieces together. I'm supposed to use super glue but somehow it did not work very well. Um, there's actually a third piece here so this part will actually go to the lens um, itself. So I'm now just uh, using some black tape to secure this since this is just a prototype. So I'm going to test to see how well this works. Inside my Afghanistan box camera I uh, have the developer and then the bleach so we will do the developing and the bleach inside the box camera before we take out the print for the second exposure and second development before we put it inside the fixer so in the paper itself i have some uford rc paper 5x7 size these are expired paper so let's try and see how it will turn out Right, so outside the box camera, I have another three trays of chemical. The first one is actually just water. So that after bringing out the prints from the box camera, uh, 
we can put it inside the water bath to clear away the bleach first and then we will at the same time expose it to light then this is the developer uh, Uford multi grade paper developer 1 plus 9 this is the same as what we have inside the box itself um, and then lastly we have the Uford rapid fixer 1 plus 4 right all right so this is the scene for today the subject is just a photography book with a big text on its cover so that we can see how it turned out to be an e uh, mirror image and how can we uh, correct that Okay, I've taken the shot and then um, I have developed the print inside the box camera and one, let it go through the bleaching steps and now I'm just washing it with some water and, and at the same time doing re-exposure. Uh, you may be able to see it on camera but there's an image already formed during the re-exposure stage. So I'm going to get rid of this water and be ready to put it inside the second developer. Okay. So I found that there's no really a fixed timing at this stage. I will just usually I will just usually develop um, by visual inspection. Huh? That means when I see that it's about the right tone or intensity, I will pour out the developer and pour in the stop bath okay you can see it coming up right now okay. okay so i think it's about right so i'm going to just take it up from the developer and pour in some water to stop it and let it go through a stop bath okay so now I will put it inside the fixer. I'm going to fix it for a minute. Okay. I'm not sure what caused all this stone here. Maybe expired paper or there's some staining. Because we did not use a clearing bar, we just used water. Right, but we can see that um, the image is actually a mirror image. Huh? The text are all mirror text. So this is the mirror scope. All right, so I'm gonna just slot it over the lens itself. I designed the ring on the uh, mirror scope to be fitting for this lens, the Fujinon 210. Now you can see that the camera is perpendicular to the scene itself, and then we have the mirror at 45 degrees. So the light from the scene will actually go into the mirror and then get reflected into the camera lens. Right, so let's take one shot and see how the, the output looks like. So for this second print, it has already undergo the developing and bleaching process. So now I'm just washing it in water and you can see that the re-exposure has caused the a fake image to, to appear right you can see it here so i think now it's about time to put it inside the second developer right and then we can stop the developing when we think that the intensity is, is right so you can see it slowly change the blacks is coming out. Okay, I'm going to develop it a little bit longer so that the the text is correct. It looks about right, so I'm going to pull this up and Put in a stop buff. 
Okay, so the prints have dried, so we can take a look. On the left is the photo that we took direct, that means without the mirror scope. And then the photo on the right is the one that we took with the mirror scope. So you can see the text in the second photo, the text is in the right orientation. Compared to the photos on the left. In terms of image quality, I certainly think that the one that we took without the scope, that means we just used the camera lens, the image is sharper. And then on the one that we took the we took using the mirror scope, it is not that sharp. Either it's because of the focusing or because we, um, the light path actually went through another uh, mirror causing the image quality to drop which I think it, um, that is probably most likely the cause. Okay. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. As you can see, I managed to correct the text orientation using my mirror scope but I think there's still a lot of room for improvement in the mirror scope design. In terms of the image quality, I think by going through a mirror before taking the photo, I think the image quality does suffer. I'm not sure, sure is there any way to correct that. So if you have any um, suggestion on how I can improve on this uh, mirror scope or any other ways that I can correct uh, the mirror image, do share it with me in the comment section below. Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it, and finally, do subscribe to my channel, and i see you in my next video. Take care. Bye!